Welcome back. You're watching Star of Central with me, Nentara Rai. Today, I am coming to you from Social in yeah. Noida. It's a very special edition. We're celebrating International Women's Day. Every day should be Women's Day, but till that doesn't happen, we at Startup Central are putting the spotlight on startups and founders that are changing women's lives every day. Now, I'm going to introduce to you Misho. Misho was the first Indian startup that Facebook ever invested in. And what it impressed Facebook was how Misho and its founders were actually empowering women by using social commerce. Joining me now, co-founder Vidit from Bengaluru. Hi Vidit, thanks so much for joining us here on Startup Central. You know, I was in conversation with the Facebook India head uh, Ajit recently and he said if you're talking about Women's Day, you've got to feature Misho. Ask them how they're changing so many women's lives, how they're empowering women. So tell us a bit about that. Thank you Nayantara, thanks so much for inviting me on the show. Over the last three years since we launched our product, now we have empowered close to 3 million women entrepreneurs across the country. And when I say across the country, it's across about 4,000 towns or cities uh, in the country. And let me share a bit about the kind of problem we are solving. So in India, most women after marriage or after having a kid, voluntary or involuntary drop out of the workforce. But a lot of these women are very educated, ambitious, and when they're not working, a lot of them go into depression, are low on self-esteem, and are essentially looking to do something of their own, to basically get back on their feet, have some financial independence. So what we did with Mishu is we built an online platform, which was a one-stop solution for them to come to a platform, get access to supply, logistics, payments, branding, and other marketing tools that they need to get kickstart a business and grow it as well. And we have seen that across the country, be it any town or city, a lot of these women have come onto a platform, have started their business and have really become successful in the real sense. So tell me something, you've empowered 3 million women. Uh, can you tell me how it is that you're doing it? I understand you're using social commerce. It's of course one of the big reasons that Facebook invested in Misho. You can use WhatsApp, you can use a Facebook group of apps now to empower women to sell what locally? Is that the whole idea? Yes, so uh, even in the offline world, it was very common for women to start community stores like a fashion boutique out of their house, a jewelry store, sell in their own society on Sundays through exhibitions, etc. Uh, but to start something like that, you always needed money. So you could buy some inventory for working capital to go to a wholesale market and come back and sell these products. But most of these women never got access to investment or capital to start something like this. What we have done is we have let them start the same fashion boutique or a jewelry store, but on social channels such as WhatsApp, Facebook and Instagram. So now they can run their boutique, but on WhatsApp and without putting a single rupee on investment. And removing that barrier of capital has essentially enabled so many of them to come on our platform and start their stores. And tell me something, uh, with this beautiful messaging that you've got and global giant uh, Facebook's uh, might behind you, along with other investors, I understand you have global ambitions too. Yes, so increasingly what we've realized is this is not a problem just in India. It's a universal problem globally, especially in developing markets. So we spent some time in Southeast Asia and we realized uh, the same problem exists. A lot of women are not part of the workforce. They're starting home-based businesses, same barriers of capital, etc. So we recently launched in Indonesia and we have seen a fantastic response. Um, most numbers in some cases are even better than India. A lot of people are leveraging Instagram and WhatsApp to start their community stores, selling uh, in their own community uh, with friends, family, other neighborhood. So we are seeing a lot of what I would say traction in other developing markets. Once Indonesia works really well, I think we will have plans to open in other developing markets soon. Okay, so you look, you started with Indonesia, you're looking at other developing markets as well. Uh, but you know, with what you said that a, a woman or anybody who wants to uh, start transacting on Misho, start selling on Misho, start uh, a social commerce business on Misho doesn't need to make an investment. How does Misho make money? How do you spread the word as well? And have you noticed that there are any kind of products that are more popular? So in India, uh, because most of our users are married women who are running these stores and selling to people around them, ethnic fashion, which is sari suits, kurtis, are the largest categories. Uh, 
um, and they continue to be very popular uh, because it's something which works in almost all places in the country. And when you talk about us making money, uh, we take some commission out of all the products that get sold on the platform and from other partners, be it logistics, be it payments. So we take a commission from there because even on the supply side, we are solving a very core problem for India. Most of our suppliers on the platform are small time manufacturers and traders, people who have been primarily selling offline, haven't figured out an online distribution channel for them. And finally, we opened up something that really works for them. So these guys are super happy to come onto a platform, grow their business, and very, very happy to share some profit out of that sales. Vidit, you know, I know you have a section on testimonials which shows, you know, how you have changed women's lives. Someone's put a down payment on a house, someone has managed, uh, you know, to send their children to college abroad, all of that. But for the benefit of our viewers who have not been on the Misho website, have not seen the testimonials, as a founder, co-founder, do you want to tell the ET now viewers how Misho has indeed changed a few women's lives? Uh, of course, Misho is all about inspiring stories of women who have started something uh, really big coming from nowhere. So let me start this story of one of our early users in Bangalore. Like I, I met her at her home, realized that this lady has been trying to start her own boutique for the last 20 years, going to her husband, asking for money and not getting any help, right? Kind of depressed. Uh, doesn't feel confident anymore and she came onto a platform starting using it and very soon realized that now she is financially independent she doesn't have to ask people for money all the time and more than that it has given her a strong professional identity so she used to say that earlier people used to call her someone's mother or someone's wife but now people recall her by her business name right and that identity is the biggest gratification that we give to our users on our platform. People feel that they are also part of something, they have created something and people are recognizing them by their professional identity. And we have so many of such stories across the country, be it south of India, be it Lucknow, where we have someone um, who is one of our popular users, Lavi. Essentially, she was a homemaker extremely smart women was trying to have a baby uh, it was not working out everyone in her family was giving her a very very hard time uh, she went into depression then discovered Misho started her own boutique uh, started gaining confidence uh, she's become like very very popular even within the Misho fraternity and recently she had a kid and she was saying that my zero to hero story is only because of Misho if Misho did not exist she may have uh, even taken a life because she thought about suicide so many times, right? So we have so many of these stories across the country where people have come out of nowhere because they essentially got an identity for the first time. Okay, so you're literally changing lives and you know they say imitation is the best form of flattery with it and obviously what you came upon and you stumbled upon and you know that's also after a failure or two uh, has struck gold, you, Im you know impressing a lot of investors and now giants are copying you. Facebook, if, uh, sorry, Paytm wants to start social commerce. Insta Mojo wants to uh, jump on the social commerce bandwagon. What do you make of that? Yeah, I think it's a great validation of everything that we have done, right? Unless a lot of people want to get into something, you don't even think that's big. And it's a validation of all the work that we have done. People realizing that this can be a big business opportunity as well as a big way to impact social lives across the country. But I think it changes nothing else for us. Uh, it's just a lot of people are thinking about it. Uh, a lot of innovation is going to come from this sector in the next decade. But we are super user focused continue to focus of how do we make our entrepreneurs more successful every year, be it in terms of giving the right tools, right categories, or even building a better product, how to onboard them in parts of the country where it was not possible earlier. But we will continue to stay user focused, improve their lives, and if we continue to do so, I'm sure that we will come out successful. You know, I remember I had uh, interviewed Ajit, the Facebook India head after the made an investment into me show and said the biggest clincher were, was of course how you're empowering women and providing employment to millions of women. I want to ask you since then, 
uh, have you been to San Francisco? Have you met Mark Zuckerberg? How has life changed for Misho uh, since the Facebook investment? Yeah, so I think a lot of people, especially in the startup ecosystem, knew about us before that. But really, we really came into limelight in the broader world. A lot of people started to know about the impact that we are making after the Facebook investment, which is great, right? Facebook has been a great partner to us, has been super helpful in even expanding into other markets like Indonesia and continue to involve us in everything that's happening in India, be it WhatsApp and Facebook. So I think uh, that investment has been great. We've got great partners who really believe in us and it's just gonna get better going forward. And you know, is this a new trend that you're noticing? You're of course pioneering it uh, when it comes to social commerce, but you're not alone in doing it. There have been a lot of others who are starting. I just talked about how Paytm, Insta Mojo want to get onto it. But even look at Bulbul, for example, serial entrepreneur Satin Bhatia doing what Bulbul is. Is this the new trend in the ecosystem? Yes, yeah, so I think the broader trend is people are realizing that e commerce is not just search based marketplaces that existed. Um, I don't know of these are some of the new formats, how they will do only time will tell, but it generally validates that there's no just one way of buying online, right? People are going to create value in n number of ways. A lot of people will create value by curation, people will create by, uh, value by media such as video, and a lot of these new formats will come over time. So I think it's just great for the ecosystem, it's great for the consumer because now they're discovering and buying in very new ways and it will just evolve in uh, n number of other ways over time. So, But I think it's just about a lot of limelight has come into social commerce because we really believe it's the next big thing in e-commerce and bro maybe it could become even bigger than the broader search based marketplaces because they're more of a western format than how India works, right? So you know, you're changing 3 million women's lives. I want to ask you that, uh, do you remember the first woman who signed up on Misho and started transacting? I still do. I still do and I, I still remember she was based out of Bangalore in Whitefield. I went to her home, I spoke to her, she told me about all about her life, about all the challenges she faced, of how she's always thought about this thing every day, every night. So I still remember her, her name was Anu and that story keeps me on the ground, tells us that, hey, our focus has to be improving lives of such women across the country. But that story is very close to my heart and I don't think I will ever forget it. You know, I also was on your uh, Twitter profile and while you call Misho the rocket ship, you know, you've talked about how women are being empowered. What's also amazing is that a lot of the women on the platform are also handicapped and widows. And you know, we know that in India, how the infrastructure doesn't support them uh, physically, emotionally. Yes, so I have spoken to uh, a lot of such entrepreneurs on a platform. I still remember one lady from Bareilly and she sent a long email thanking me, thanking the whole Misha family. And what she was saying was, hey, I have done masters, but I'm handicapped and I struggled so much to get a job and no one is giving it to me. Then she discovered Misho, realized she could start something of her own and then she was saying that finally she has made it big, she has a fledgling business, a lot of people come to her store to buy products, she is now known and she is also independent of sorts, right, so that again changed her life and we have widows who are trying to make uh, money for the family to sustain them because they don't have husbands to take care of them anymore, we have retired women who are trying to make pension by doing this on the side and also uh, it's one of their core interests. So we have like a diversity of people on our platform who are trying to achieve their dream, their goal of life, and we are essentially helping them do so. Vidit, I'm going to make this uh, my final uh, question to you. Uh, you know, 2019 was a fantastic year for Misho. It's literally like, you know, it was a rocket ship uh, on steroids, charging ahead. Uh, two large fundraising rounds, you know, you close the year with NASPERS also coming on board. What's your vision going forward? Where will Misho be, let's say, five years from now? Yes, yeah, so our goal is simple and it's not going to change. Our goal is to essentially enable anyone to come online and start their business without any investment. We, start with, we started with homemakers. Over time, we have diversified to a lot of other women segments. Now we have a lot of younger women who are in colleges trying to become fashion influencers on Instagram and we are helping them. 
We have working women who are doing this. Now we have retired women who are doing this. We are enabling them to sell more and more categories. We started with only apparel and now we have everything in fashion and lifestyle. We recently started wellness and we want to make other opportunities available to them and they could be anything. And our goal is also to go to the deepest parts of the country where opportunities are not there. So we historically have done very well in east and south part of the country, but still not very strong in north part of the country, especially Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, because women literacy levels are not great. But now we are figuring out how can we tailor a product to even get them on board, maybe build a more handholding experience. So five years from now, we just want to do what we are doing much, much better than today. Enable essentially anyone in India to start their own business of any kind without putting a single rupee or investment. And not just do in India, but do it globally. But then how do you make money and do you have a road to profitability? I'm sure your investors on board are, uh, you know, question you on that quite often. Yeah, so the great thing is um, we are not a business that burns a lot of money. We've always been very, very capital efficient. We are selling long tail products which generally have larger margin structures. You do not discount them because there's not a very strong perception of price, all of that. We are not spending money in consumer acquisition because our women entrepreneurs go out and get customers. So essentially, structurally, this is a much better business in terms of making profits in the long term. So it's one of those unique combinations of a business that has a lot of potential of making money, as well as having impact uh, socially at a very, very large scale. And we are fortunate to be in this business. And uh, with that, Vidit, here's uh, wishing you all the very best from uh, Team Startup Central. Here's to Women Power and uh, to the entire Team Misho empowering millions of women every day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.